Welcome back everyone. So today we're going to make another pasta. Now this pasta was one of my favorite pasta and I'll show you how we're going to make this one. So we're going to start off pretty much the same amount because we're not making big batches. We're making uh, nice size batches that you could feed from six to two people depending again like I said how much you want to eat of it. I had that much more semolina, I'm just going to throw it in. Flour. We've got salt. Okay guys, one of my favorite pastas was a squid ink pasta. But because we're vegan and we don't eat any fish, we're going to use charcoal to this recipe to make our pasta beautiful and black. So we want this to be as black as night. So we're going to start off with, we've got one, we're going to put two tablespoons of, and mine is heaping, of charcoal. And I'm using activated charcoal. You could get this anywhere. You could get this at the health store or you can get this online. Now people are saying, why are you putting charcoal? Isn't charcoal bad for you? Trust me, charcoal is not bad for you. If anything, it's detoxifying. And if you're worried about, if you're on medication and you're worried that it might uh, remove the medication from your body, then don't make this recipe. But if you're on no medication and you want to try this recipe, it's very easy. And this is how simple that recipe is. And to this, we're going to add, I'm just going to mix it first. We're going to add... Uh, from three quarters to a cup depending on how much it, Like for me my cups are always a little heaping, but it would be about three quarters to a cup But remember the firmer the dough Okay, so remember the firmer the dough the firmer the noodle if you make your dough too soft These noodles might break up in your water. So noodle uh, pasta needs to have a nice firm firm dough, but it still has to be nice and pliable because you want uh, you want your pasta to be nice and stretchy, uh, but the semolina is what's going to hold everything together for you. So here it is. It's not fully to the top, but I am going to use a little at a time. So I'm just going to put that aside for now. Hopefully I won't topple that over. Okay, so I'm just going to, making it go everywhere. I'm going to mix this up first, and then I am going to put this through my my beautiful mixer that my daughter's got me. And I'm going to start adding the water. Here we go so you can see what I'm doing. So, here we go. We're going to add the water slowly. Remember, you don't need a full cup unless your measurements are like mine where they're not always the perfect measurement. But do a little at a time, you can't go wrong. So here we go. Okay, so there we go. My dough is done. Perfect. And it's going to look darker once this gets cooked. So we're just going to flour our board. And here's our beautiful dough. Now, I didn't bother doing it, but if you want it to have that fish taste, then there's something else you can do. And that's simply, instead of using regular water, what you do is you're going to soak seaweed. And you're going to use the seaweed water to give it that, <clears throat> that fishy flavor that you would get if you were having the squid ink pasta. But you could do it only for presentation, which is also nice to have. It's also a nice little conversation piece you can have while you have people over your house. And it's also nice to have if you're making, if you make this pasta on Halloween for the kids. So, it really is a fun pasta to eat. Who says that pasta has to be boring, right? Okay. Okay. 
so here's my beautiful pasta this rested uh, overnight so the elasticity on this pasta is amazing so remember uh, if you used to like the black squid ink pasta you can make it with charcoal if you want it to taste fishy all you have to do is soak some seaweed with some water and then you're going to use that water to make uh, to add to your flour and that's going to give you that nice fishy taste that you get with the squid ink now um, I didn't do the fishy water because my daughter wanted some ravioli and I'm going to show you how simple it is I am using the machine I'm going to show you now I have my machine here there it is and hopefully I'll be able my daughter's going to help me crank it because where I am right now I'm not in the best place for making videos so I'll have to do what I can the best way I can for now until I have a different setup but I'm just going to show you use my black knife for my black my black dough look how beautiful that is so when you use this machine you have different notches and you always want to start with the first notch there we go always start with the first notch and as you pass your dough when you pass it in one more time you just change your notch and the dough gets thinner and thinner okay I'm gonna show you when I do it later for now I'm just gonna pass this and it's just nice this is really a beautiful pass if you have people coming over say next now remember if you don't have a pasta machine ooh, your ear is squeak notice how it's getting thinner now if you don't have a pasta machine you can simply do all of this by hand it will take a little longer but if you make small batches of pasta then you don't have that problem right you're not sitting there making the biggest batch of pasta you're just gonna make the smallest amount so you don't have to stay there all day long trying to make pasta okay so here's my dough I started off I cut a small slice and I got a pretty nice size dough now we can make raviolis different ways you can make it either the pierogi looking way where I showed you you could use a glass and you can just twist the glass and it cuts your noodle or you can make it um, with a cutter and I'll show you this is a cutter that you can use and you can cut your ravioli square shape so I am going to show you what I did I roasted some beautiful kabuka squash now I'm not putting anything on the squash it's just plain squash that I uh, that I roasted let me just move this over okay just to so show you that really food doesn't have to be complicated you can simply take a little bit of squash and make some ravioli now depending how big your ravioli is there we go we're just going to take a little bit of this dough and now you can use oh, my hands are washed guys you can use the full amount and make a big madaglione I'm just going to show you another cutter something like this where you just fold your dough with your stuffing and then you just cut it and you make these large size um, madaglione type of pasta or like I said you can take this cut it in half like this and just place it right on your dough very simple you don't need that much I'm telling you it's not expensive to make food like this with a small wedge I mean I'm just using this is a half a wedge of my kabuka squash you could actually make a lot of raviolis because when I scrape this I can make about three raviolis per scraping 
and I still have some left. So I'm just going to continue showing you how I make them like this. Push this one over a bit. I will use my fingers. Sorry guys, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Here we go. Here's some more. Now, like I said, you can make these pierogi style. I could even make it tighter. They even sell, uh, they even sell the ravioli cutter where you have, they have wells. It's like a square. It looks like almost like a, um, an ice tray and it has wells where you fill up your dough and then you put another sheet like this of dough right on top and you make, here we go, and you make your, uh, you have like a little rolling pin and it just kind of presses it into the shape of square raviolis that people are accustomed to. Here we go. Or you can fold this over like this. And you just make Your indentations and you can still make them square or you can make them round now we could have brushed the dough I'm just gonna press it down there we go and we have our shape oh, I should have flowered it on any let me just put some flour I'm just going to push some of the stuff on the side. So, like I said, my space is limited, guys. So, we got to make do with what I have. Now, if you free cut them, they might not all be the same size. But that doesn't bother us at all, if it is or not. So, you have different ways of making ravioli. There we go. So now if you have a cutter here, here we go. Now if you had a cutter like this, you could simply. Isn't that the one for Ravioli? No, this is for Medaglionis. Oh. You could simply cut them. I'm going to show you. You're going to cut them across. And don't throw this away because that goes through the machine again. There we go. And we're just going to go right to the edge here because I should have pushed it over a little. Just so that it has that. Yeah. I should have been more in the center. But hey, sometimes I don't think when I should. Okay. So we're just going to push this over. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get everything in camera. Otherwise, it's not this difficult to make them. And again, here we go. We cut them into ravioli shape. And there's your ravioli. They're not all going to be the same size, but it really doesn't matter. What's nice about it? Eh, when, rustic. More rustic, exactly. Thank you, Erica. I took the word right out of my mouth. Okay, and this goes in for reneeding. So there's our beautiful ravioli. And what did we put inside? Basically, just a little bit of roasted. It's just roasted with a little bit of black pepper, salt. And um, I did sprinkle a little cinnamon on them. Uh, but if you don't want to put cinnamon, you don't have to. And there's nothing else but the squash. That's the beauty about the squash. It's so pasty that you really don't have to use any binders whatsoever. All you have to do is just scrape it into a scoop. And then with one of these, you can make up to three to four Ravioli. raviolis. So look at that. Look how many raviolis I made with just a little bit of my squash. So I'm just going to put these on a wooden cutter. There we go. Now, aren't they beautiful? So there's different ways of making raviolis. And you can make these in the morning and then cook them at night. You could also make them 
and freeze them. Now, if you're going to freeze them, what I would do is lay them down on a flat plate. Uh, give it a fast freeze where you could actually feel that they're frozen and then dunk them in a bag, tie the bag and leave them in the freezer. Because if you're going to just throw them in wet like this, they might stick together. Okay, and these scraps, what I normally do is I get a bag over here. You want to give me a bag? Oh, here it is. And I drop them in the bag. The moisture will keep them nice and pliable so I can run them into the machine again. So we end up getting as much as we can when we make our ravioli. Okay. Flour our dough. And we're going to pass it through the machine. Okay, Erica, you want to grab that or even your camera. Now I'm going to pass it in a couple of times. And now I can start adjusting my dial to the next setting. It is faster than using the rolling pin, but remember guys, if you make a little bit of dough, say you want to make pasta just for you and your husband or your partner, you really don't need to have a pasta machine. You make a small amount of dough and you could do it by hand. And do it on a day when you, you're not so stressed out. And do it early in the morning. This way you have lots of time to make them, clean up, and then all you have to do is cook them. So as I change my dial, there we go. As you change your dial, your dough gets thinner and thinner. That's my last setting. Yes. Sorry. Thank you, Erica. Now, wouldn't this be nice to make something like this for your kids for Halloween? That is my last setting, I think. Yeah. So I'm just going to pass it a few times and it will get even a little longer. Okay, so here we go. So here's another way you can cut your raviolis is you work with half a sheet and it goes smack in the middle this way you don't mess up. So I'm putting some there. <laughs> Ready? Get your little cutter. Now, if you don't have this, you can still make it just by cutting your dough with your knife. But you could pick these up anywhere. There we go. So this is another way of filling your ravioli. Thank you, Erica. Throw this aside. There we go. And we cut them. Beautiful ravioli. And we have more ravioli, guys. Now, like I said, if you want to make these smaller, you can. It depends how big you want your raviolis. But look at that. With a little bit of dough, you can make a lot of pasta for your family. And you don't have to sit there. And these are filling. When you eat some of this, it really fills you up. So you don't have to make that much. You don't have to gorge on them. And if you're having people over, what a beautiful... If you're having people over, what a beautiful dish this would be, right? With the colored pasta 
and you don't have to put that much it could be an appetizer it could be um, just a little bit before you have your main meal so there we go we join this with the rest and we're gonna have more dough to make more ravioli so I'm gonna keep making these I'm gonna put my dial back to my largest setting and like I said don't worry if it's cracked just keep passing it until you can reshape it so you take it and you just fold it over and pass it again make sure you've got flour on it otherwise it's gonna stick in your machine and you keep folding till you get the right size and we're gonna keep passing this in the machine it again last setting show you guys that this is still workable okay there we go you can still pass this through the machine and make more dough there we go so there's that dough and we can still make more raviolis Hold it till you get it to the right shape you want. Now, if you really want to make sure they're shut on you, like that there's no opening, you could always wet your noodle and then put your flap over. There we go. Find my center, which would be there. And this side I put my stuffing and the other side is the side that I am going to flip over or you can just make them half moons like I showed you uh, you put your stuffing and then actually I could do some to show you regular glass or you can use this where you're gonna just like cut it to make it look like a ravioli You can even use sweet potatoes if you don't have kabuka. And this, of course, you're going to want it 
Yeah, you want it closer to the edge. There we go. So there's different ways of making it if you don't have the tools. So you can make the dough by hand and then just use a glass. And it'll be more like a pierogi or how a pierogi looks like. off here and now you're going to flip this completely over to the edge remember if you're worried they might open up on you all you have to do is all you have to do is wet your dough before you flip it over and you make them okay so if you're using this you'd be making a half moon this way we just roll it around or you take your glass find your half and just cut them or pierogi whatever you want to call it or if you have a cutter like this you could just simply go around and then come over to the side and make it that it looks like this. Our beautiful half moons. Again, save this, ready to go through the machine again. These machines don't cost much. I'll put a link where you can find one on Amazon for you. Okay, so that's the second type of pasta you can make. So you've got your square raviolis, you've got these beautiful pierogi type pasta. And I'm going to show you one of my and my daughter's favorite. Is we cut this in half. Oh yeah, like that. Take off that end. That end, save that. Now you can cut this by hand or you can cut it with a cutter. And you can make some really pretty pasta. go and if you don't want to let me just flower this and if you don't have that cutter you take your trusty knife and you can just simply cut your dough into nice wide pieces and these are so fun. So you can make also your pasta this way. How simple is that? And like I said, if you don't want to make all your pasta today and you want to have some more pasta tomorrow, just simply put this in a Tupperware, in a bag. Tomorrow you can still make it. And the longer, well, you don't want it to spoil, but the longer it uh, stays in the fridge a day, two days, your dough is going to be even more elasticity, so it's going to have a beautiful feel on that pasta. That pasta will be just, it might take a little longer to cook. Instead of cooking in a minute, it might take two, but it really is a nice, number one, fun pasta. Talk about inviting people over and you put a nice plate of black pasta in front of them. They're like, what? Half of them don't even know. I, like I said, I remember eating squid ink pasta and I loved it. But like I said, I didn't put any fish water with the with the dough because I was making uh, raviolis for my daughter. 
and she just wanted the beautiful color pasta. She didn't care if it tastes of fish or not. But if you wanted to have the nice fishy taste, you can make this and add the water that's been soaked with seaweed. So it's that simple. So I hope you like this recipe, guys, and show you all the fun ways you can make pasta. You make small batches like I showed you. Uh, you make plenty of pasta. Look, I've got everything here. Plus, I have this large cutting board of ravioli that's made. So, I've got dinner for two, dinner for three, with just a little bit of dough that you make. So, you don't have to sit there and do it the way my mother used to do, where I used to take her forever. So, here you go, guys. If you like this recipe, put a like, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment if you try it. And guess what, guys? I'll see you in my next video. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.